Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I came across an article that uh, Brittany sent me the other day that I thought I would cover because this is really, really relevant uh, in today's world. And it has to do with an article, another write-up of an article about everyday feminists claiming that fat acceptance and obesity acceptance should be promoted and that weight loss doesn't even improve health. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing. Work on skilling up my craft a little bit, and let's talk about this absurdity. Uh, normally, this is the sort of topic I would cover on my firearm and political channel, but because this has such an enormous uh, fitness and health social element to it, I think it's more appropriate on this channel. So we're going to discuss it here. But, yeah, Everyday Feminist is claiming this. And, of course, right up I see at the top of this article a thing of Amy Schumer, and I'm probably going to discuss her later of her being selected for the role of Barbie in a movie. Um, but yeah, there's a problem here. We have a problem when radical feminism and, and this new wave feminism is actually promoting terrible health. All right, they're promoting terrible health and they are killing women. Now, it's kind of crazy when you think about it because, you know, feminism was originally started to uplift women. And you want to know how to uplift women? Why don't you put them in the gym? Why don't you put women underneath a heavy squat bar? Give them a heavy deadlift bar. You want, you want to empower women? Put them in the weight room. Get them into shape. Make them feel good about themselves because they're strong and fit and healthy. That's how you uplift women. And, uh, of course, uh, Brittany lifts, obviously. You guys have seen her doing deadlifting and everything else. Getting reasonably strong. Lost 40 pounds while still um, kind of eating what she wants. She just adds in extra salads. And when she linked it to me, she goes, wow, these fat, dumb bitches. That's actually what she sent me. Because that's what they are. That is what they are, and they are promoting uh, destroying health. And it's so crazy when you have this fat acceptance movement doing this. And, and it's crazy because you see feminists saying things like some of these radical ones and professors and everything saying, well, I don't have to be thin or in shape because I'm not trying to impress a man. And it's like, at what point do they think that your health and fitness is about impressing uh, a man or impressing a woman? You know what? Uh, that's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. You shouldn't be getting fit to impress other people to, to attract a mate or to attract sex. You know, honestly, that's not even required. Even guys who think that getting really in shape is going to make it five times easier for them to get laid are delusional. Uh, there's very little truth to that. Women don't even care that much about how your body looks. They care a little, but not a lot. Most of them don't. So it's even more so crazy with this with women because it should be about how about you do it for yourself. How about you do it to make yourself feel better? Why don't you do it so that you can be stronger, you can be fitter, you can be healthier? That's a real good reason to get in the gym and get in shape. And these women, uh, these feminists, are promoting ideas that are extremely destructive, that weight loss, if you're obese, doesn't help your health. Really? There are probably 50 studies out there showing it does. Every cardiologist out there agrees that it does. All of them. All of them agree, the top experts. And so who are these crazy people with a social agenda to come in and tell medical doctors who have to deal with clients and see blood work every day, who anytime they have a client who's really overweight, who loses 20 or 25 pounds, that their blood work and their health markers improve enormously. You ask any cardiologist when he has someone who's 50 pounds overweight, uh, what happens to the blood pressure and uh, the blood markers and cholesterol of any of his clients who are 50 pounds overweight who lose the first 20 or 25? It is like a night and day change. They're still not perfect, but when they lose half of the weight that they need to lose and they still have more they need to lose, it starts to show massively, massive health increases in these people. Uh, and it literally is extending their lives just to lose half of the overweight weight they have can sometimes add 10 years to their life. All right, it can allow them to come off of extra medications that they don't need to be on. So this idea that uh, not that losing weight doesn't improve health and that obesity should be glorified. Obesity being glorified, you might as well just glorify suicide. Suicide would be a less painful way to die. They might as well be glorifying that instead because that's what it is. It's slow suicide. It's slow suicide. Uh, we have tons of studies out there showing that obesity has an enormous association with type 2 diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, and even cancer. All right? Being obese can double or triple your chances of getting certain types of cancer. 
And that's what people need to understand. There was like, well, I see all these cancer patients who are skinny. Yeah, because they lost 100 pounds because of the muscle wasting and the chemotherapy and the nausea and everything from the treatment. All right. They were obese, many of them, when they were first diagnosed. A pretty good chunk, the majority of people, when they're first diagnosed with cancer and they start to show the signs of it, are obese already. Now, sometimes they start losing weight rapidly due to the cancer itself and particularly due to the treatments. But being obese morbidly obese will absolutely increase your chances of dying of cancer all right this is it is a health destroyer we have an obesity epidemic and it's crazy because you see this whole fat acceptance thing being sent as a backlash against wafishly thin models and anorexia you know what yeah that'll kill you too being an anorexic will kill you all right it is just as deadly as being morbidly obese um, and that includes men too, men who get down to anorexic level body fats for dieting or to get ripped. It will kill you too. It's just as dangerous. But here's the difference. Nowhere near as many people die from being excessively lean in, in the Western world. Do you know why? Because it requires more work. You actually have to be disciplined, consistently disciplined and dedicated to be an anorexic. All right, you have to be disciplined. Now, it's a mental disorder and it will kill them. I mean, it's basically being dedicated to your own death. Now, for some reason in the fitness world, guys don't seem to understand these same facts. They don't understand that being shredded all the time will kill you. Uh, it seems to go completely over their head, but that requires the same dedication that an anorexic has. It's the same thing. Um, they just don't always accept that it's deadly. Uh, anorexics rarely accept that what they're doing is killing them. Just like the guys who want to get that lean all the time, they don't accept it either. But the thing is, they're in denial, but now the obese are in denial. So it's going both directions. You've gone fighting back against one extreme, people want to go to the other deadly extreme. It's like saying, well, heroin is deadly, so we're going to use cocaine instead. That's the level of absurdity, as if there's not some middle ground. How about you don't do either one? How about you don't be morbidly obese or anorexic? I mean, that's a possibility. You could be normal. You could be healthy. I mean, that's also an acceptable possibility for most people. Uh, but it's like that just goes over people's heads. They have to go everything from one extreme to the other. But now, these people who are morbidly obese are promoting it as if it's healthy and it's not deadly. They're in the same denial now that the anorexics are and the, the men's physique guys are who are obsessed with being shredded. The obese are now becoming just as much in denial as these groups are, delusional thinking that what they're doing is not going to kill them. It is going to fucking kill you. It is going to fucking kill you. And you can deny it all day long right up until you start developing uh, life-threatening medical conditions. Then what are you going to say? Oh, well, I guess the, the doctors were right and I was wrong. I guess uh, these feminists or these bodybuilders or whoever who told me this really didn't know what they were talking about. And my doctor was right. Well, now I have a med major medical condition. My organs are failing. I mean, that seems like what it takes for these people. But this is scary that they're being allowed to promote this and they're getting up and doing this, uh, promoting this whole fat acceptance thing now. And then teaching people that it's about inner love. No, it's not. If you are doing something to your body that is going to destroy your quality of life, destroy your health, kill you young, give you diabetes, cancer, heart disease, no, you shouldn't feel good about it. What in the hell are people talking about? They shouldn't feel good about doing something that is self-destructive and destroys your quality of life. That is like telling people, well, you just need to accept the fact that, uh, you know, you might be a major alcoholic or a heroin addict, but you need to love that part of yourself and just accept yourself for who you are. No, you need to get the fuck off the drugs. That's what you need to do. You need to get off the fucking heroin. You don't need to accept yourself and love yourself for it. You need to get off of that shit. And it's the same way for these people who are morbidly obese, carrying an extra 70, 80 pounds of body fat. They need to lose the fucking fat. They don't need to love the fat. That shit is killing them. I mean, that's so insane to, to love and accept something that is fucking killing you that's insanity it's delusion that is just beyond belief that this is even being promoted and taught and quite frankly something that dangerous being taught at a certain point uh, everyone else has to speak out about this. I mean, I'm not saying we need to write laws. I'm not big on government interfering and free speech in people's lives. I'm not real big on that. So I don't want to say that we need to write laws to stop these people. But everyone else who knows better, medical doctors, fitness professionals, everyone who's got a public voice about this, they need to at least be speaking out. Let's use our free speech 
to speak out against this extremely dangerous and destructive free speech. No, you don't need to feel good about your fucking self if you're 100 pounds overweight. No, you don't. You need to go down. I'm killing myself by stuffing fried chicken and french fries in my fucking mouth all day and sitting my fat ass on the couch. I need to feel bad about that. Uh, it's self-destructive. It's not only making me look disgusting, it's killing me and making me feel shitty every single day. It makes me feel physically bad. It's destroying my joints. It's destroying my heart. Uh, I should be mad at myself for doing this. I should be disgusted at what I have done to myself and I need to get the fuck up off my fat ass and do something about it. That's what these people need to be thinking. They don't need to be accepting it and loving it. Uh, that's insane. That is just as insane as people telling, being told that they should just love and accept the fact that they're a heroin addict and love themselves for it. No, that's bullshit. Get their fat fucking asses in the gym and get them away from KFC. That's what they need to do. Jesus Christ, people. Uh, again, articles like this are dangerous. They do not need to be written and people need to speak out against this bullshit. Alright guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.